If you have your Bibles, open them with me to the book of Hebrews, the 12th chapter. Hebrews chapter 12 is where I want to go this morning. Let's go down to verse 27 of Hebrews chapter 12. Now this, yet once more, indicates the removal of those things that are being shaken, as of things that are made that the things which cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, Let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. I'm so thankful today that what he's saying in the first verse is everything that's man-made and temporary, it's being shaken. We're living in that time. We don't know what the next seven months are going to bring. I, I feel an uneasiness just a little bit. What is coming? We've got wars all over the world. We've got things happening internally. Everything that can be shaken is being shaken. But we have received a kingdom. Now, if you haven't, you can't shout on that part. But if you have received a kingdom that cannot be shaken, and my family's in that kingdom. My marriage is in that kingdom. My life is in that kingdom. And it does not mean that we're immune from trouble and storms and difficulties and adversities. But whatever life brings, I have received a kingdom, a structure, a foundation that cannot be shaken. I want to preach today on how to be unshakable. Because you see, the foundation that we build our life on matters. That's why in Matthew 7, it talks about there are only two foundations that people build their homes and their lives on. He talks about building your home on the rock. And he said, and when the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house, it didn't fall for it was founded, it was structured on the rock, but to every one of these sayings of mine who hears it and they don't do them, they're like a fool who builds their house on sand and the rain descended, the floods came. Notice they go through the same thing. We're not immune. We, we, don't, we don't get a get out of free, get out of jail free, get out of pain free, get out of suffering free card because we're Christians. We're going to all go through it in life. But the only difference between the two is what they're building their lives on. One is sand and one is the rock. And it said that the one on sand fell and it was a great fall. The other one stood through the extreme storm. And the amazing thing about storm shelters, extreme storm shelters, is when they're giving the way that they have to be constructed, they're told not to use air nail guns. I thought that was interesting that when you're building a hurricane shelter, a shelter that must absolutely guarantee that it's going to be there, it'll be there through terrible storms and hail force winds, there's nothing wrong with an air nail gun, a nail gun. There's nothing wrong with it. Pop, 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 pop. And it's up quick. I think it's a brilliant invention. And that's good if you want, um, if you want something for uh, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. It might last 50 years with a nail gun. Pop, 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 pop. But if you're going to build something that's going to endure the most extreme worst storms, you got to go not with the new modern tools that run on batteries, but you got to get the old hammer and nail out. It's pretty amazing. The old method 
is the one that you want to trust when the storm comes, when all hell is breaking loose. I don't need to know that my whole life is built on just a pop, pop, pop of a little bit of religion, but I need that old hammer and that nail and that cross. I need something that will outlast the storm. The hammer and nails, sometimes you miss and it's bloody and it's, and it's hurtful and it's painful and you're suffering and you're going through long days and long nights and it's, and it's just exhausting. But when God doesn't give you the quick pop, pop, nail gun answer, know that he's building a structure in your family for generations. This isn't a quick throw up garage. This is a generational blessing. And every time you open up this book, you're using the hammer and the nail. And every time you come to church, it's not just a pop pop, but this is what we do. This is who we are. This is what family is supposed to do, is bring your family and worship. You are building an eternal house. I'm simply trying to preach to you today that the structure really matters. The foundation matters. How much Music, filthy music can you listen to before it affects the structure of who you are? How much filthy pornography can you look at? I tell you, I, that, that fear, I fear, I, that's the fear of the Lord. We need the fear of the Lord back in the church. We need, to, we need to understand that anybody can fall, but unto him who is able to keep us from falling, if we stay connected to the skeleton, which is Jesus, the flesh may fail, but it'll always get back up. Because the structure and foundation is solid. God put Adam to sleep. And he reached in his side, opened up his side, and pulled a rib out. You know why he put Adam to sleep? Because God didn't want his opinion on how to make his bride. And I think the church ought to be, I believe the church ought to, I believe that. God's not asking your opinion about his bride. He know, he's a carpenter, and he said, I'm going to do it with a hammer and a nail, and I don't care if you like it or not. you either going to repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and receive the Holy Spirit and get into my word and love me and forgive and walk in forgiveness and holiness and separation and live for me or not. You, I don't care, but you're not going to get, your opinion is not going to change this guy with the hammer and the nail build in the church and creating a bride. And he forms Eve out of the structure of Adam. And he brings her to him. That was, and then Adam wakes up and he says, you're bone of my bone." your flesh of my flesh, and power comes from that structure. Did you know that the Bible said in Leviticus that the life of the flesh is in the blood? And life comes from blood, and blood comes from your bones. Bone marrow is what produces blood, and, and so if, if you play around with the structure of the bones, you're going to get in trouble. The bone structure can choke off the blood supply. Don't play with the bone structure. When we put when we put rainbow flags out in front of our church, we're playing with the structure of the church that Jesus built. And that's choking off the blood. The bone is what produces the blood. 
love everybody, accept everybody. You're welcome here, but I'm not going to change the message, the structure, the foundation is repent and be baptized and be born again and the old things pass away and behold all things become new. I could be an adulterer, but I've been born again. I could be a liar, but I've been born again. Same thing for any other lifestyle. Do you know there's a story in the Old Testament where they didn't handle the bones of a king right and God sent a famine? Because when you start changing the structure of a house and a nation and a home that God has built, it won't last. Jacob strutted into Bethel and wrestled with God. He walked in, Jacob, and wrestled with God. And God said, I'm going to change you, boy. But I'm going to change you structurally first. And he pulled his hip out of joint. Read it. He wrestled and the angel pulled his hip out of joint. And God said, now that I've changed the structure of who you are, you can walk out now, Israel. I'm changing your name from Jacob to Israel. And you're going to walk away with a limp. And you're not going to walk the same way you used to walk because I've changed you structurally. You are not the same person inwardly that you used to be. That's old-fashioned repentance right there. God can change how you walk from now on. Somebody shout over that. I mean, they told you counseling couldn't change you. Nobody could change you. A program can't change you. I'm not against any of those. They can help you stay on the straight and narrow, but you have to have a structural change at some point. And the blood and the cross... And the nails and the hammer of Calvary are the only things that can change you. Let me close with this. In 2 Kings, the Bible said that the Israelites were coming from a battle and one of the soldiers had been killed. And they were being chased by the enemy, and so they took the corpse and threw it in a cave. And it was the cave where Elisha's bones were lying. And when the dead soldier of a new generation touched the old bones of the old prophet, touched the old foundation, touched the old structure, notice this. Anytime the structure is there, Resurrection power is looking for an opportunity. Resurrection is always attracted to structure, which means if the enemy attacks you and your family, as long as you hold on to the word and hold on to the cross and hold on to the name, and the power of the Holy Spirit, I can't promise you that it won't look like it's dead but I can tell you that what draws resurrection power, it's always drawn. Yeah, it's bad, the new generation, but if they'll touch the old structure, the old hammer and nail, I don't, it's not pop, 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 it's hammer and nail, the cross. And when they had the Passover lamb, there was a command, and Jesus fulfilled this prophecy said, when you eat that lamb, make sure when you cook it and when you prepare it that you do not break one of its bones. No bones on that lamb was to be broken. Isn't it amazing that when they took Jesus to Calvary and hung him on the cross, he had a thief on one side and a thief on the other side. And the soldiers, in order to speed the crucifixion process up, would break the knees of the person they were crucifying. And the Bible said the soldiers went to break the knees of the thief on one side and they broke his knees. And they went to the other thief and broke his knees, which caused the blood to go faster and caused the person to die. Notice this. On one side, one represented Adam, broke the knees, Adam fell. 
The other side represented Lucifer. How do you know it represented Lucifer? Because he said that old thief cursed Jesus and said, if you are the son of God, that's the same word Satan used in the wilderness when, he, when Jesus was fasting 40 days and 40 nights. So one represents the fall of Adam to sin. One represents the fall of Lucifer from heaven. And they go to break the knees of Jesus, the Passover lamb. And the Bible said that he had, they stuck a spear in his side. Watch this. A spear in his side. Blood and water gush out in his side, just like Adam. Just like Adam Eve is going to come out of his side, blood and water, born again. He's going to get him a bride out of Adam's side. He's going to get him a bride out of Jesus' bleeding side. We are the body of Christ. We are the blood. We are the bride of Christ. But the powerful thing is when they went to break the knees of Jesus, they said there's no need to break his knees. He's already dead. Why? Because the, why couldn't they break his knees? Because the structure couldn't be messed with. And any time the structure remains, it doesn't matter how bad the situation gets. If you stay on that firm foundation, resurrection is always attracted to an unbroken foundation. And on the third day, he came up out of the grave, out of the tomb. I'm preaching to families. I'm preaching to people. Hell wants to destroy your family and your marriage, and we've been there. And I can truly say, sometimes you feel like all you got left is a skeleton. But if the structure stands, get ready for resurrection. Because God's not finished with you and your family. Mama, quit worrying. Quit being afraid. Quit worrying. If you built that foundation under your children, I tell you today, I will build my church. The man with the hammer and the nail said, and the gates of hell will not prevail. It's a guarantee. Wow. Stand to your feet all over at every campus. No one moving, please, reverently. Just stand there for a moment. Can I challenge you this morning? I feel this in my soul at every campus to get out of your seat and come down with your family as much as you can and stand together and reaffirm the foundation and the structure. The Bible said in Romans, nothing can separate us from the love of God. Come on, bring it to Jesus. Bring it to him this morning. Now all over this room, lift your hands up toward heaven. And I want you to pray for a moment. I want you just to say, God, we give you our homes. We give you our family. We give you our nation. We give you, oh God, our church. We give it to you. We build it on and reaffirm the foundation. I'm not building on sand. I'm building on the rock. So we come back to you today. Some of you, like Samson, have been playing with things. Come back to the firm foundation, to the structure. Let's worship all over this room. Let's worship him. Let's praise him. Give him your family. Every head bowed, every eye closed, every campus. If you don't know that you know you're saved, if you've wandered far, if you're lost, if you've lost the structure, if you've, if somehow you've allowed that rock solid foundation to be destroyed in your life. You can come to him this morning. 
He's got a hammer, a nail, and a cross. And he'll wash you, and he'll cleanse you, and he'll forgive you. Pastor, you're preaching to me today. I need that firm, unshakable foundation under my life. I need to surrender my life to him. If that's you, boldly lift your hand right where you're standing. I'm going to pray for you. Right where you are, hands are up all over the room in every campus in the prison. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He loves you. He loves you. He loves your family. He loves your home. Just keep that hand high, unashamed. Just raise it high and unashamed. Now look around you, and if you see someone with their hand raised, gently lay your hand on their shoulder. There are hundreds, it looks like, across this congregation, and I'm sure that there are many, many, many out there. Take time to lay your hand on them as an act of support. To say, I stand with you. Pray this prayer out loud, everybody at every campus. Say, Jesus. Those of you online, say, Jesus. I surrender my life to you today. I thank you for that cross, for that hammer, for those nails. And Lord, I receive a kingdom that cannot be shaken. I know the winds will come. I know the adversities will come. But I receive a kingdom that cannot be shaken. We will stand. We will overcome. We will stand firm on God's promise. I am forgiven. I am born again. Give the Lord a mighty, mighty, mighty praise this morning. Thank Him and praise Him. He heard you. When you use that name, the gates of heaven swing open wide when you use the name of Jesus. And I want you to go on the website and let us know what God has done or pick up the phone, dial the number that's on the screen. We would love to pray with you. Before I go, I want to take a moment to say thank you to every one of you who are supporting this ministry. And especially, I want to thank you for the unwavering support to the nation of Israel during this time of horrific war. We ask our friends and our partners in Eshkel, what can we do for you in this time of emergency and so much sorrow and brokenness and pain? What do you need during this time of war? And they were very clear in their requests. That's why we're building the JFMM Eshkel Resilience Center. It will provide treatment for PTSD for all of the men and the women and the children that have experienced horrific attacks and rapes and things that we can't even imagine. I saw the actual footage at the Israeli embassy in Washington, D.C. as it was happening, the actual footage of Hamas. They were so proud of pouring gasoline on babies and children. I've never seen things that human eyes should never see. I'll never forget it. And even worse than what I'm describing. And so the PTSD, the mental condition of the whole community is, uh, is, is marred. And, and we know that God can bring peace to the darkest, darkest situations. We need your support to make this million dollar vision a reality. It's another million dollars on top of the other three million that we are using to build the hospital and other things, other another million dollars for the Apostle Paul project and on and on all over the world. Will you help us? I believe if you will, God will bless you if you'll consider giving a special gift. I know the Lord. I'm going to tell you what to do. Pray about it and you'll hear from him. He'll lay whatever he tells you to do, do it. It'll be enough. If everybody will do something, you can't do everything, but you can do something. Will you help us? I believe if you will, God will bless you if you'll consider giving a special gift. Thank you, and please continue to pray for the nation of Israel.
I'm standing here in the Zak's house, the Zak family house in Kibbutz Kisufim, the first community that we introduce you to. On October 7, this entire family perished. When we walked after the atrocities of October 7 into this house, we saw the father lying here behind me on the floor with a knife in his hand. And in the shelter behind me, the mother in bed, hugging her son, both dead and both burned alive. But just like this instinct of a family to protect each other, to save each other, this is what we feel with you, Pastor Jensen Franklin, and your entire congregation. It was an instinct, a family instinct, to come and stand with us and to remind us that we are not alone. You are responding immediately because you know us. You know us already for many years before. And you committed to build a resilience center that will give us therapy for our communities to heal together. In these atrocities of October 7, we know that we will rebuild again. It will be painful and hard, but we know that with you, we can make it happen, step by step, together as a family. This program has been sponsored in part by friends and partners of Jensen Franklin Media Ministries. Your prayers and financial support make these programs possible. For more information about this message and other ministry resources, visit us online at jensenfranklin.tv.